Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, an apartment complex destroyed by a massive fire last night. This is a three-story unit building, and so we have lost this whole building. So as you can see, the fire behind us, it was uh, really advanced when we got here. Up next, what the fire chief says is being done for all the people who live at the apartments this morning. And today, more than 60 million people are in path of some damaging street line winds, tornadoes, and large hail. We're going to tell you which parts of the country are under the threat. And we are still under a gigantic heat dome here in South Texas. Will it break down at all and allow a chance at a shower or storm anytime in the near future? Mike Osterhage will be along with our work week forecast and to a degree back to school. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. It is August 7th. Hey, thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful weekend and we hope you were able to stay indoors for most of it. That's right. So remember, back to school kind of starts today for a few districts and then it's staggered over the next two weeks. Uh, well, actually the whole month if we, yeah. if we count yeah. Northside because Northside is the very last week of August. But yes, everybody's kind of starting at different days this year. When he went back today, good luck this year. Yes. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see how that oof, the pickup is going to be this afternoon. No, uh, not good. No, I, it's this is getting ridiculous. As I said in a point, I mean, and there's no change this week at all. It is going to be just brutally hot all week long. We are starting off this morning like usual. We've got our clear skies. We are in the uh, low 80s, upper 70s. We'll drop down maybe another couple of degrees. Enough humidity out there this morning to give us a heat index of 87 at Canyon Lake, 85 out there at the airport as well as Castroville and um, allergens. Mold is on the low side this morning. Did go up a little bit from the previous day's reading. Of course, it is a yellow day as far as CPS energy conservation. You can scan that QR code. Once again, we do have the heat advisories and excessive heat warnings. The excessive heat warning 1035 all the way in through the metropolitan area out in toward Uvalde. And on top of that, of course, we have the red flag warning still in effect. We've had a few of those grass fires over the weekend, and that's still going to be a threat, obviously, because as time goes on, this, the tinder dry conditions, especially late in the afternoon, it seems like the toughest part of the day is right about noon and early afternoon. We still have the humidity hanging around here and temperatures get into the upper 90s. Then the humidity drops off somewhat. We get up to 105 just like yesterday and pretty much each and yesterday we tied the record high temperature and that's going to be the case all week long. Close to tying, maybe setting the individual daily records. Get used to seeing that number. We have to take a look way down the road to see if there's any any sort of relief out there. But like I said, this is getting ridiculous and it's going to continue all week long. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. See it again a little while this morning. Not much is left of a three story apartment building on the northwest side that was destroyed due to a large fire late last night. According to the San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood, it started just before 9 p.m. and it was at Frederick Apartments in the 4800 block of Gus Eckert Road near Fredericksburg Road. Our Camelia Juarez has the latest from there. We're here at the Frederick Apartments off of Fredericksburg Road. It was a three story apartment building that is now burned to the ground. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood says that firefighters had many challenges with this fire. This is a three story unit building and so we have lost this whole building. So as you can see the fire behind us, it was uh, really advanced when we got here. We had challenges with the wind. We had challenges with the, the elevation and we had water issues, supply issues as far as trying to get water on this fire. Uh, right now we're reporting um, that um, the building has not been cleared completely, so we're going to have to go in at some point in time and do a secondary search on that third floor and the rest of the building. Uh, at the advanced stages of the fire, we were unable to do that and had to go defensive immediately. We have evacuated everyone and we have via buses that are going to come out and we can put them in. Because of this fire, a lot of people are, have been displaced and San Antonio Fire is looking for a place for them to stay tonight. Camelia Juarez, Case at 12 News. Today is the first day of school for the Edgewood Independent School District, that district in the heart of the city's west side, so be on the lookout. School speeding zones within the district will be in effect, and keep an eye out for buses making frequent stops as well. 
It is also the first day of school for Lavernia ISD. And again, good luck to both districts. Well, now to the extreme weather impacting the morning commute for millions of Americans. Storms are taking aim at much of the East Coast. And as ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, severe thunderstorms are expected today from Washington, D.C. to New York and have already caused problems, especially at a sold out Beyonce concert. Started. Frightening Still moments right at the Beyonce concert at FedEx Field in Maryland last night. <laughs> Tens of thousands of fans packing inside the stadium after a shelter in place was issued due to lightning in the area. A danger outside, but inside intense crowding with temperatures in the 80s. People reportedly passing out, several needing treatment for heat exhaustion. At least one person was taken to the hospital. <laughs> People started passing out and we just kind of looked at each other and we're like, you know, it's, it's not safe. I don't feel good about being here. This morning, dangerous weather is expected along nearly the entire East Coast with severe thunderstorms from the deep south to New York. Expected to bring damaging wind gusts and flash flooding with large hail and isolated tornadoes possible. In Alabama, severe storms took down trees, causing more than 15,000 power outages. There goes, there goes. And a far more dramatic scene in Alaska. This home collapsing into a river in Juneau as a state of emergency was issued for major flooding. We were just watching the, the, the banks just slowly erode, then all of a sudden the whole roof and everything just came down. Officials say the flooding was triggered by the fast-paced melting of the Mendenhall Glacier. Experts say Alaska has been warming at twice the rate of the rest of the country. This is a 1% to a 0.2% chance of this type of flood taking place at any given time. So this is a very rare event. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. This morning, police are still looking for a suspect in a mass shooting in Deep South, Texas. It happened yesterday at a nightclub in Edinburgh near McAllen. Investigators say someone opened fire and shot seven people. Two of those people are in critical condition. Now, a surveillance camera captured images of the suspected shooter and the damaged car he was driving. Police down there are now trying to determine a motive for what happened. In Pakistan, at least 30 people were killed and more than 90 others were hurt when 10 cars of an express train derailed yesterday. Some of the train cars overturned and local television showed rescue teams extracting women, children and other passengers from damaged cars. The most seriously injured were taken by helicopter to distant military hospitals. The country's minister for railways says an investigation into the cause of the crash is underway. Since no one won Mega Millions Friday night, this morning the jackpot has grown to over one and a half billion dollars. That's a potential record if someone wins the grand prize this week. Well, nobody matched them all. Seven tickets across seven states won a million dollars each. One of them was in Tyler in Northeast Texas. The next drawing is scheduled for tomorrow night. And don't forget Powerball tonight is $145 million, which pales in comparison, but still is a nice chunk of change. Yeah, it, either way would be nice. Yes, ma'am. Time now, 438 and 80 degrees for now. Fentanyl is the number one killer of 18 to 50 year olds here in the U.S. Up next, why now is the time. Experts say parents need to have a tough conversation when it comes to educating your kids about fentanyl. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuide. Looking over at I-37 at Hackberry, where things are moving early this morning. Get those kids hydrated this morning if they are off to classes this week. It's going to be another scorcher out there as we take a live look at San Antonio International Airport. GMSA has just began, begun, and we're glad you're with us. 441, as you prepare for your kids to go back to school, experts say you need to put a tough conversation on your checklist. Educating your kids about fentanyl. Fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin, and an amount the size of a pencil tip can be deadly. It has made its way into every other type of drug without users knowing it. As Courtney Frieden reports, both a grieving mother and a substance use expert says it's time to be honest with your children. Danica Summer Caprosi was 17, about to graduate high school with the full life ahead of her. She was allergic to certain foods that was causing her body pain. Her mom, Veronica, said Danica may have tried to self-medicate with pills she got through Instagram. So she took what she thought was a Percocet and um, did not wake up. She died July 20th last year, and since then, Veronica has been on a mission. To save a life, so other mothers are not sitting here in front of a camera telling their story of their child. Her advocacy has landed her in front of Governor Greg Abbott, State Rep John Lujan, and has her visiting schools educating students about fentanyl. 
is the number one killer of, uh, of 18 to 50 year olds in the United States. It kills over 150 people a day, the same number that fills an average commercial airplane. Peter Pereno is the CEO of Burning Tree Programs, running substance abuse facilities in Texas. Fentanyl has overtaken his work and personal life. He lost a close friend to fentanyl just last week. Got some pills off of the street, which he didn't think was fentanyl. And, uh, you know, he's dead. I had a friend a year ago who was on medical marijuana, ran out, went and bought some marijuana off the street. It was tainted with fentanyl and he died. He says it's now laced into every type of drug. And that's what he tells his 16 year old son. You don't want to try and scare your kids. You just want to provide them with the facts, right? Every time they use drugs, um, they're rolling the dice. They're playing Russian roulette. Talk to them. Be sincere. Don't yell at them. They both say every teenager should be carrying Narcan with them so they can help reverse an overdose if they see one. I need parents to talk to their children because they need to hear, hear me, hear my cries. That was our Courtney Friedman reporting right now for 43, 80 degrees. Up next, what investigators are revealing now about what was found on the phone of a Georgia mother accused of murder for hire, a plot in the Bahamas. Welcome back. It's 446. This morning, there is new information in the Bahamas murder for hire case. ABC's Eva program has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the Georgia mom accused of a murder for hire plot in the Bahamas. Lindsay Shiver, seen here on TikTok, often posting family photos and videos of herself on social media. Police arresting her and two other alleged accomplices. Investigators searching their phones and saying they found a number of WhatsApp messages suggesting a plot. All three initially not talking to police, but Lindsay Shiver later admitted to sending messages and photos saying kill him. If they're able to prove that it rose to the level of a legal agreement, that is essentially all they need to prove in order to convict her and find her guilty of conspiracy to commit murder. And we'll have the very latest on this developing case coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Quick check of the roads with Trans Guide. It was pretty calm earlier. Now looking at I-35 at Vince Engelman, things are moving there as, as well as closer to downtown, I-35 at Maine. Can you guys even remember the last time we said the roads are a little wet this morning? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a very long time yeah. ago. You know, and, it, and it's funny because when we were getting that rain, remember how we kept saying, okay, we've had more rain up to this point than even all of last year. Yes. And we were just kind of late spring, early happy. summer, right? Yeah. 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 And, you know, you always start to think, gee, maybe it's going to be, you know, wet all, maybe we won't hit 100. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Boy, so were we just misled or just flat out <laughs> silly? Yeah, we're we just were just silly. <laughs> we were living a lie, weren't we? 105 yesterday, and that tied the record. It was a gorgeous sunset, uh, you know, the heat notwithstanding. But yeah, another scorcher of a day in the books out there at Woodlawn Lake. Beautiful picture, though. Thank you very much for that one, Mr. McClellan. All right, we are starting off a lot of clear skies out there this morning, and we do have our higher humidity around here. So far, we have chalked up 42 days as of yesterday, and we are going to continue. We will hit uh, 50 and then some by the end of the week. So we're going to be even going into next week, maybe even rivaling 2011 as far as the total number of triple digit days because there may be a little bit of something down the road into next week. I keep, I know last week I was saying, yeah, look down to next week, but yeah, by the middle of the month, it does look like there may be a little tiny break in the action here. We are going to be right around uh, upper 70s. We'll drop down a few more degrees this morning, up through the 80s very quickly this morning, 96 already at one o'clock and 105 high temperature. Again, that's going to be a record today. Yesterday tied the record. The today's record is 104. Obviously nothing showing up satellite picture wise. And uh, this is kind of tells the whole story as far as what's going on in the country. Huge system up there around the Great Lakes area. And notice how everything is moving straight west to east. It's the high which is plunked down on top of us. And then you actually have taste of fall up there to the north. 47 cut bank, 50s right along the uh, U.S. Canadian border. And there's actually going to be an watch the especially up to the north. First of all, that high stays in place. There's all these little lobes of cooler air. So starting to see those cool fronts move on through here. But that thing is just holding tough and it's not letting anything sort of come down in 
our direction. So that's going to be the case all the way through the week. We stay very, very hot and all of these little waves that move on through here, they'll make it down maybe the middle portion of the country. The only hope is by the first of next week, Tuesday ish that again that high slides off to the west a little bit more bit of a northwesterly flow. We get a slight disturbance moving on through here. Trim temperatures a couple of notches here or there and uh, other than that also maybe a shower next week. But again, that's kind of speculation right now. We uh, you like consistency 105s and 78s every single day. <laughs> those are the records on the uh, top right there. So each and every day is going to either be close to tying, setting a record high temperature. Again, heat advisories today and excessive heat warnings and red flag warnings. I have no, no really reason Aww. to think why that wouldn't happen the rest of the week also. We can appreciate consistency even more if it shows a downward trend. True. Yes. Yeah. But yes. no, on the serious side, those, I mean, because there were a lot of uh, grass fires that popped up this weekend. Oh, yeah. And again, there's nothing to change it. So that's mm -hmm. definitely going to be a threat. You've really got to watch it. That hot, dry breeze, too, yep. did not help. Yep. No, it's not fun. Thank you, Mike. 451, 80 degrees. Billionaire Barbie seems to be the next interaction of the iconic doll. Up next, how the movie is breaking even more records this week. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, four, five, Fireball seven. Your daily four number, 0707, zero, zero, seven, Fireball one. Looking at cash five, two, eight, 17, 23, 29. And your law of Texas, two, 12, 14, 45, 49, 53. Your Powerball numbers, 18, 42, 44, 62, 65, Powerball 23, Power Play 2. Good luck. Almost no one will be surprised to hear that Barbie is now a part of the billion dollar blockbuster club. That's right. For that and the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Chuck Sieberstein. What do you say when you're a billion dollar record breaker? Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. In just three weeks in theaters, Barbie is hurtling past a billion dollars in worldwide ticket sales. For Greta Gerwig, it breaks a record for female directors by Patty Jenkins, who directed Wonder Woman. The movie piled up another 53 million bucks from North American movie houses this weekend, say studio estimates. Despite bad reviews, the Shark sequel, Meg 2, The Trench, was second with $30 million. In third place in its third week, Oppenheimer, adding another 28 plus million. Jamie Foxx apologizes after sharing a message on his Instagram account Friday that some called anti-Semitic, according to Entertainment Weekly. I want to apologize to the Jewish community and everyone who was offended by my post, Fox wrote in a new post on Saturday. I now know my choice of words have caused offense, and I'm sorry. That was never my intent. August 7th birthdays include Charlize Theron, who's 48, David Duchovny, 63, Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. 455, 80 degrees. Fire destroys a large apartment complex on San Antonio's northwest side. Up next, why it was tough for fire crews to put it out and how many people are out of their homes this morning. What's next for former President Trump now that his attorneys have until today to respond to a request for a protective order in the latest criminal case against him? And ahead on GMSA at 6, the infamous Florida Python Challenge is back for its 10th year. Why thousands of snake hunters are moving through the Everglades swamps this week. Checking Trans Guide right now, 90 a Couples looks great. So does 281 at Hildebrand. Steven Cavazos is in the studio. We'll have weather at 501, traffic at 503. Stick around. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Quite a few folks waking up in a different bed this morning after a fire destroyed their apartment complex. At the advanced stages of the fire, we had to go defensive immediately. We have evacuated everyone, and we have via buses that are going to come out, and we can put them in. Just ahead, why San Antonio fire crews had a tough time getting the fire out and keeping it contained. Former President Donald Trump's lawyers now just have hours to respond to a new court filing from special counsel Jack Smith. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more on the timing and the details from Washington. And waking up there with live cam this Monday morning. We're already starting the day at 80 degrees. Things will heat up again this afternoon. Just things we will need to be prepared for.
And a good morning to you. We hope you had an awesome weekend trying to stay cool out there with the extreme heat. It is Monday, August 7th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us and uh, happy back to school for some districts out there as well. No doubt about that. So our inclination on morning shows to try to keep things light and we would love to do that with the heat, Mike. The problem is it's just so dangerous, especially when you string five to seven days or more together. Yeah, I mean, we've been in the, you know, 103, 104, 105 range since late last week and that's going to continue. Yesterday was 105, and that's what I've got across the board all week long. Tied a record yesterday. We are going to be either tying or setting records all week long. 80 right now, so we have dropped down a little bit from last hour. The dew point temperature, which is usually the case, has gone up to 72 in the overnight hour. So it feels like 84 when you step outside right now. Like I said, 105 high temperature today. And as far as the aquifer, it has been going in the wrong direction most of the time. At least it went up a little bit over the weekend up three tenths of a foot and allergens are all on the low side. So heat index readings when you step outside. Yeah, you definitely notice that humidity this morning. 87 is what it feels like up the road at uh, Canyon Lake. 82 hello to 85 in Castroville. Of course, we have the heat uh, advisories and the excessive heat warnings. Those are in effect till nine o'clock. And then on top of that, once again, we've got the red flag warning San Antonio up I 35 going out 10 and then also right there along the Rio Grande, all the counties there. This with those two graphics, I don't see any reason why I'm not going to be showing those all week long. Heat advisories, excessive heat warnings all week long this is my guess from the that the weather service would do as well as those red flag warnings because there are no changes in this forecast whatsoever. Warm and humid, that'll be the case each and every morning. 105, that is going to be a record high today and near records either tying or setting close to it each and every day. 105, high temperature the rest of the week and there is no relief in sight this weekend. It will continue into the weekend, perhaps something by next week. And I say that with a big question mark. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. Did you keep cool this weekend? Yeah, stayed inside most of the day, uh, Mike, but uh, thankfully drivers are probably having a pretty cool start, at least on the roadways. Let's uh, get a look here at US 90 at Medio Creek. Uh, traffic's moving pretty smoothly through those areas, but I talked to Trans Guide early in the morning as I do as I wake up every day. We did know that there were some pretty big closures that happened overnight. In fact, uh, all the lanes there, main lanes along US 90 eastbound, not too far from here, were blocked off due to some road work. Now, it does look like that has since wrapped up, and you can see behind me the lanes have reopened and traffic's moving along great and we're not spotting major issues here on the map but as I bring you in we do at least have one stall vehicle along loops pardon me loop 1604 eastbound not too far from Green Mountain Drive unfortunately it's that area where there are no trans guide cameras so just watch out if you have to travel through that area let's hope for a better update soon making your way into San Antonio this early in the morning well that journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about 26 minutes at this hour 281 southbound heading in from Bulverde is about a 27 minute drive and it's the same for for anyone traveling along I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So Monday morning off to a pretty decent start. I'll keep a close eye on things. I have more updates on other closures you want to be on the lookout for. That'll be coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you. This morning, a three story apartment building on the northwest side is destroyed due to a large fire last night. Now, according to San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood, the fire was reported at 845 p.m. at the Frederick Apartments in the 4800 block of Gus Eckert near Fredericksburg Road. Chief Hood said the building, which held about 20 units, is a total loss. Residents have been evacuated, and so far there have been no reports of injuries or missing people. The chief says the fire was really advanced when firefighters arrived on scene and says there were challenges with wind and water supply from fire hydrants. A lot of people here have lost all of their belongings, so it's very sad. This is a very dynamic fire. As you can see with the embers blowing, we had concerns of other buildings catching on fire. We had concerns of the neighboring apartment complex on the other side catching, so we had the wet roofs. And Chief Hood says via buses help transport those that needed a place to stay and authorities were finding shelter for them for now. At first, the building was not completely cleared as firefighters had to go defensive on those flames. Crews had to do a secondary search later. The cause of the fire is unknown so far. Well, that was the second multi-alarm fire that SAFD responded to yesterday. Around noon, authorities said a person started three fires on the west side, resulting in five buildings being damaged. And neighbors are telling our Camelia Juarez that they believe they saw the suspect light at least one of those fires. 
And I, when I was backing out my yard, I saw a guy uh, looking suspicious. This neighbor, who didn't want to be identified, headed to the store, and when he came back, his yard was on fire. He then saw that suspicious person again. I saw him going to the second house, the block house, and uh, stick his hand to the window. Smelled like a bunch of smoke. Another neighbor, uh, Ben Martinez, like says he woke up to his grandma telling him to get out of the house. You don't want to see something like that when you wake up, you know? So it's just, I mean, it's an unexplainable feeling, especially when you're right behind it. Only several feet away from their home, a vacant apartment building was engulfed in flames. You don't want nothing else to burn, so you just try to do whatever you can to get everybody out and be safe. And that's what happened. Everyone made it out in time. Now San Antonio police are looking for the person or people they say set fire to that vacant apartment and two houses. Those fires spread to two other homes, leaving Nicholas Valdez and other neighbors on edge. My grandma lives next door, so we were like, we're that it was the flames were going to spread over here. And fire crews put out the flames, but San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood says it was a close one. With the high winds and this heat, we're very fortunate we did not lose a block. Valdez hopes whoever is responsible is caught before more damage is done. Put him in jail. I mean, that's, you know, it's not right. And on top of all these fires close to home, we have been monitoring a wildfire spanning 400 acres in Hayes County. This morning, the Texas A&M Forest Service says it's about 50% of that fire has been contained. It all started about Saturday afternoon north of San Marcos on Oak Grove Road, which is still blocked off. One home was destroyed and about a dozen others were evacuated. We saw smoke and she saw flames and we could hear the crackling and the sound of it and the wind and the, the heat we said get the dogs get out get, get out, out get out and to stay on top of the fire and all the others you can follow along for updates on air and online on our website at kset.com the clock is ticking for former president donald trump's attorneys they have until this afternoon to file the response to special counsel jack smith's request to prevent president Former President Trump from spreading key case details and evidence from Smith's probe into election interference and January 6. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, Smith's request awful also references one of Trump's recent social media posts warning against going after him. This morning, former President Donald Trump's defense team under deadline pressure. After denying their request for a three-day extension to respond to special counsel Jack Smith's protective order motion, D.C. federal judge Tanya Chutkin now holding Trump's lawyers to a 5 p.m. Eastern time cutoff today to file a response. In his request, Smith argues Trump could use his social media to disclose evidence or even intimidate witnesses as prosecutors and Trump's defense team prepare for trial in the 2020 election interference case. The motion filed a day after Trump pleaded not guilty to charges, including conspiracy to defraud the United States and conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Trump on the campaign trail in South Carolina, calling his latest four count criminal indictment fake charges. They're trying to make it illegal to question the results of an election. Trump's former vice president turned Republican rival for the 2024 presidential nomination appearing on CNN. Mike Pence says he's not planning on testifying against Trump in the election interference case, but is drawing his hardest line yet between him and his former boss. I'm running for president in part because I think anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. Trump's defense attorney on this week saying he can't wait to question Pence. You may think that somebody is acting um, inappropriately under constitutional principles, but Mr. Pence, who's a lawyer, never said to Mr. Trump, I think what you're doing is criminal, and that's very important. Federal prosecutors say the protective order request is in line with others commonly used, isn't overly restrictive, and that Trump's team can modify it at any point during the case. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 509, 80 degrees. And just ahead on GMSA, how Google is making it easier to correct your grammar on mobile and desktop. Plus, a first look at the newest edition of Texas Crime Stories. We'll tell you about a serial killer who eluded justice for decades as he was in and out of prison since the 1970s. And looking out there with live cam, what can we tell you? Prepare for the heat once again, but for now, a tolerable 80 degrees. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. It's 512. Today we are getting a look at the latest episode of the Texas Crime Stories podcast. Erica Hernandez takes a look this morning. A serial killer who eluded justice for decades as he was in and out of prison since the 70s. With his recent arrest and chilling admission of more murders, the investigation takes a new turn, reopening cold cases that could hold the key to uncovering the full extent of his gruesome crimes. Join us as we dig deep into the past, present, and future of this haunting case, shedding light on the failures of the justice system that has left the families of the victims suffering. Here's a serial killer that, that uh, justice was not served. So it was a travesty of justice uh, totally in this case. We unravel the disturbing details of a murderer who repeatedly slipped through the cracks of the justice system. This is Texas Crime Stories, the Austin Caller, unveiling of a serial killer. The full episode is out tomorrow. You can check it out on our website at Kesa.com and our YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. By 14, 80 degrees. And just ahead, how users can soon take advantage of YouTube's enhanced playback. Checking Trans Guide, Steve Cavazos is in the building, keeping an eye on things. We've already heard from him once earlier in this newscast, and we're going to talk to him a little bit later on as well. I'm a bear. I'm coming out of hibernation after the best nap of my life. And Papa is hungry. <laughs> and while you're hitting the trail, I'm hitting your cooler. Oh, cheddar! I've got a hot dog bun! And your cut rate car insurance might not pay for all of this. So get all stable and be better protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Roar! With Allegra, allergies don't hold us back. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. And unlike Zyrtec, it won't make us drowsy. Allegra gives you the fastest, non-drowsy, 24-hour allergy relief so you can live your greatness. Still living with odors? Get back in there and freshen instantly with new Febreze Air Mist. Febreze's new finer mist floats longer in the air to fight even your toughest odors. So long, sticky smell, and hello, amazing freshness. Discover the new Febreze scents today. 517. We say good morning to Stephen Cavazos. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Good, morning. good to be back in the studio with you all yeah. after our report along Loop 1604 last Friday. You had a busy morning. We had a busy morning, and you know, we always want to make sure we can bring our viewers the updates. Um, the latest update from Loop 1604 on Friday was that that big project was postponed. So, good news for drivers, and uh, what we were hearing from Texas that it was due to a quote material issue. Now, we don't know exactly what that means. We don't know if that was a lack of material or if it was a wrong material but we'll find out and we'll update our web article but let's check out the roads right now they're not too bad if you have to hit hit the roads and get the day rolling here as you get a look there there's i-10 at the y pretty nice shot and i think it's uh, one of our favorites here in the studio so great shot courtesy our friends over at trans guide but they've been keeping a close eye on the roadways as have i and as you can see there's really not a lot going on out there we have a pretty quiet start here on our map and you can see a lot of that scattered construction but as we bring you in we do at least have one stall vehicle still reported right here here along Loop 1604 eastbound at Green Mountain Drive. No trans guide cameras in that shot, so just remember to watch out and move over or slow down anytime you see those flashing lights. But as we were talking about full closures that were supposed to happen over the weekend, more are planned, but this time along I-10 over on the east side of San Antonio. This is according to TxDOT. Take it in, guys. Friday, August 11th, we will see a full closure there up until Monday, August 14th. This is overnight, so that should help reduce some of the congestion out there from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. I-10 and the Loop 4 at 10 interchange will have that closure and all the eastbound and westbound traffic will be diverted to the frontage road. Uh, it's a new week, so that means we do have a new week of closures. You can scan this QR code, takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page, and we have a full list of all those closures on our website. Always good to know before you go, but the other good news is, Mike, all those people out there along Loop 1604, the crews did not have to battle the heat this weekend. Yeah, there's a house a couple of doors down from me, and they're putting a new roof on, oh. and those folks were out there all day yesterday doing that. I don't know how they they survive. So more power to them. But why? Wow, just got to be careful out. I got to be careful with the fire. This is courtesy of the Texas A&M Forest Service. It's that fire up there, that grass fire up in Hayes County. And we had a couple of them on Saturday as well. 
just you really, really have to be careful because, of course, everything. I mean, look at your backyard. Maybe I know mine is just, just browns like straw out there right now. So the fire danger is extremely high, especially later on in the afternoons when the relative humidity does drop down. So far, 42 days at triple digits, and this is as of 86. Beg your pardon. At 55 at this time last year. Of course, last year we topped off at 58. So we only had three more days uh, after yesterday that we chalked up triple digits last year, but we've got a whole lot more. We're going to be hitting 50 and getting into the low, maybe even mid 50s as far as the total number of triple digit days when you look at this week. All right, out there at the airport, we got a lot of clear skies right now and uh, temperatures will we're at 80 will drop down maybe a degree or two in the next few hours, then warm up very quickly this morning, 92 at noon. And what's unusual is we still have all the humidity around here it takes longer in the afternoon for the humidity to mix on out, which is why we stay at 92. But as soon as that humidity gets out of there, then that makes it easier to warm up. So that's why we see sort of that spike in the afternoon when those dew points do drop down into the, the low 60s around here. So we're going to be gaining a good 13 degrees between noon and later on in the afternoon. 105 is going to be a record. All right, out there in the tropics, once again, nothing going on as of right now. We are just uh, just past one third of the way into the tropical season. Obviously, September is the most active month, but still nothing going on out there in the Atlantic Ocean. And I keep showing that high, which just will not move. It's sitting right on top of us. And actually, there are some indications that it may kind of strengthen a little bit, which is going to keep us up to the uh, the 105 region all week long around here. And then again, up to the north, now, there have been years where we've had those sort of anomalies and in in the summertime we get this just front that moves on through here, which is really out of the ordinary. We don't usually get our first good front until probably late September, maybe sometimes mid September. And these little disturbances, though, up there in the northern tier of the United States, they can't even try and edge their way down further. There'll be some activity in the central portion of the country, but that high just is sitting very, very strong around here. There are some long range indications, and I know I indicated this last week, kind of hinting at it, that maybe by next week, Tuesday, mm, there's going to be a slight, slight break in the action as far as some lower temperatures, maybe close to 100. Look at that lower, it's close to 100. I can't believe I'm saying that, or even upper 90s, and a chance for, you know, a straight little shower here. But again, that won't be until at least more than a week from today. Until then, 105. All week long. It's close like a record. Keyboard got stuck. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but again, those lower. the grass fires. That's yeah. you know, other than watching your body, watch mm -hmm. you know, don't do anything outside like that. Be very careful. Even you remember last week we saw cars driving over the the median there yep. when there was yeah, an accident or something like too, that. Though. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't take much. Uh. -uh. Yeah. Careful, folks. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 523, 80 degrees. And up next, we'll look at the newest feature for thread users. You pick three numbers, 245, Fireball 7, daily four numbers, 0707, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 2, 8, 17, 23, 29. Lotto, Texas, 2, 12, 14, 45, 49, 53. And your Powerball numbers, 18, 42, 44, 62, 65. Powerball 23, Power Play 2. Good luck. Just about 527, Thread users will soon see a couple of new features. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, two new features are coming to Threads. Meta Chief Mark Zuckerberg has announced a web version of his new social network so users can access it on their desktops. The text-based platform is also getting a more comprehensive search function. YouTube Premium users have a new feature, a 1080p playback option is rolling out on the web. YouTube says the option provides more information per pixel, resulting in a higher quality image. If you don't have Premium, clicking on the function will prompt you to pay for the subscription service. Finally, Google is now offering a grammar check tool. Users just enter a sentence or phrase into the search bar along with the words grammar check. And the tool uses AI to analyze the language and make sure everything is correct. For now, it's only available in English. See, I always seem to have trouble with the vowels. I don't know why. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Okay.
527, 79 degrees. And we know that Margot Robbie and Matt Damon are big stars. Up next, how real star The Sun is also helping with the success of their latest films. Plus, uh, the new mayor of Bernie, Texas, shares his vision of trying to lead his community's rapid growth in a positive direction. Plus, a look inside a slithering 10-day competition in the Florida Everglades Swamps, where people hunt for one of the largest snakes known in the world. And ahead on GMSA at 6 today, a new school year can be an anxious time for teachers, parents, and students. How you can ease your child's fears before that first day of class. People trying to escape the extreme heat outside made for a big weekend inside at the box office. Up next, how Barbie and Arpenheimer are red hot in more ways than one. And looking out there with a live cam, we can keep our fingers crossed and wish for rain. But right now, uh, nothing yet. <laughs> 79 degrees and heat to come. Here's what else we know for sure. Mm -hmm. It's a good morning to you yeah. and it's Monday the 7th. Happy Monday. We hope you had a wonderful weekend and we hope you found interesting ways to stay cool. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, at least late in the afternoon, I keep talking about how the humidity does drop down, but it's that that period from, say, about noon through uh, three o'clock ish where there's still mm -hmm. plenty of humidity and we're getting into the upper 90s and yeah. even right around 100 and that even to be at the pool or something around a lake it, that's not really that comfortable so yeah being inside is is the best thing and again kids going back to school you think about being outside for recess uh just lots of yeah got a really hydrate just take it easy and then of course band practice and football and cheerleading and everything else that's going on outside and folks that have to work outside you really have to obviously we keep saying this got to keep emphasizing it because temperatures are going to be up there in the dangerous level when it gets up to 105 your body just does not cool itself that efficiently 80 is the temperature right now 72 is the dew point so there is some humidity out there we've got 84 is the heat index 87 up there Canyon Lake 85 Castroville and mold is on the low side this morning the update account is going to come out in a couple of hours heat ad advisories and excessive heat warnings up until nine o'clock tonight. Again, this is for kind of the central third of our area, all the way around the metropolitan area and the I-35, I-10 corridor. This is, like I said, where your body doesn't cool itself that efficiently. And then on top of that, we've got the red flag warning still in effect. And this has actually kind of been expanded a little bit eastward compared to where it was last week. And then also does include some of our western counties there along the Rio Grande. And we had plenty of the those brush fires and grass fires over the weekend and there may be more of them on top of that. So we're going to drop a degree or two this morning, move up through the 80s very quickly, already 92 at noon and then 105 high temperature today. That is going to tie the excuse me, that's going to set the record today, but throughout the rest of the week, either tying or setting records each and every day because we're going to be staying at 105 each and every day. Is there anything like relief anytime soon? We'll take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Steven, what's going on on the roads? Uh, we have problems over here, Mike. Unfortunately, we have a not so pretty shot show here at 410 at Villa Main. Let's get a wider look at Trans Guide. I did just step out of the studio to talk to our friends over there for a minute to see if they had a view of this crash. And right now it's uh, not the best view, but we can still see that we have flashing lights out there. This is along 410 heading eastbound over on the southeast side of San Antonio. It's a pretty busy spot. As you can see behind me, we have vehicles that are trying to navigate this mess. It's very dark, so it's hard to tell how many vehicles are involved in this incident and how many which lanes are specifically blocked. But according to reports from TxDOT, we know at least two lanes are blocked for traffic that's heading eastbound, not too far from Espada Road. So our map is also reflecting a little bit of a buildup out there with some yellow and orange. Be on the lookout for those first responders. It's also hard to tell if there are paramedics on the scene, but let's hope everyone is doing okay and that there are little to no injuries. But let's go ahead and take a drive over here back over to Loop 16. We still have this stall vehicle at Green Mountain Drive. It's heading eastbound along Loop 1604, and this is one of those areas where there are there are no trans guide cameras, so we can't show you the shot of the area out there, but we will continue to watch it on our map and see how that develops. Wide look, though, now at 532. You're not seeing anything else going on. Thankfully, we have some relief on the roads, but you want to be keep a very close eye if you're traveling into San Antonio. Thankfully, no delays if you're traveling in from any of these communities. The big problem, though, will remain right here along Loop 410 if we can get that shot back up at Villa Main. We have plenty of those flashing lights out there and traffic trying to navigate that mess. Hopefully everyone is doing okay, but I'll be back with an update. Hopefully it will be a better one in the next few minutes. Steph.
Thank you, Stephen. This morning, the flames are out, but the work is not done for San Antonio firefighters at the scene of a huge apartment fire. Crews have been keeping an eye on that building all night long, or about 20 units burned. Our Katrina Weber is near live Gus Eckert and Fredericksburg Road. And Katrina, we know the fire chief said the crews plan to make another search of the site. Do they believe anyone is still inside? Well, not necessarily. Fire Chief Charles Hood told us, uh, told reporters rather, that uh, they believed that they had evacuated everyone from this building and they had no reports of anyone missing. But he says that crews would still make another search just in case to make sure that everyone was out. Now, what we have seen them searching here for this morning is the source of some smoke that continues to come from this building. Uh, they are just trying to make sure that this fire does not spark up again. Putting it out last night proved to be a big challenge. They had huge flames coming from this building at the Frederick Apartments when they arrived before 9 last night, but that was only part of the problem. Chief Hood said they also had to deal with strong winds and fire hydrants that weren't working properly. The firefighters had to struggle to pump water uphill from other hydrants. People who live here also were scrambling to get out of the fire's path. It seemed to take a lot of people by surprise. Licks of flames were shooting everywhere. Pieces of, I mean, 15, 20 minutes is going by and it's raging. There's 20 fire trucks everywhere. That woman escaped with only the clothes on her back. She told us she lost medicine and memories in the fire and possibly her two cats. Part of the building actually collapsed. And about 20 families in all have lost everything, their homes as well as their possessions. We still don't know at this point yet how this fire started. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Today is the first day of school for the Edgewood Independent School District. The district is in the heart of San Antonio's west side, so look out for speed zones to be active within the district uh, boundaries. Also, keep an eye out for buses making frequent stops as well starting today. It's also the first day of school over in Lavernia for their independent school district. Of course, first day of school for students varies by district and the upcoming school year has a three week difference between the earliest and latest start dates. Right now on KSAT.com, we have compiled a list that shows start dates for all San Antonio area school districts for the 2023-2024 academic year. Each district is also linked to the approved academic calendar for the school year, which provides more details regarding student holidays and extended breaks. It's all online for you right now. It was a historic weekend for the film industry with this summer's two blockbuster films rewriting Hollywood's history books. Some of the summer's biggest movies so far also got a little boost from the oppressive heat blanketing much of the country over the past few weeks. And as seen as John Lawrence reports, AMC, the largest theater chain in the world, just reported its largest single week admissions revenue. Mattel Inc. may want to create a new action figure called Billionaire Barbie. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday and so is tomorrow and every day from now until forever. <laughs> Three weeks after its debut, Barbie has brought in more than a billion dollars worldwide, according to Warner Brothers, which is owned by CNN's parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery. It's got a nostalgia play. Everyone remembers playing with Barbies. It's got smart marketing and it's got good content. The other film that's been likewise earning a pretty penny over the past few weeks... Oppenheimer. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. On the same day Barbie passed the 10 digit mark in sales, Oppenheimer collected more than 500 million and became the biggest grossing film that takes place during World War II, according to official estimates from Universal Pictures. While plots and actors undoubtedly helped get people to see these films, the major heat wave is also helping. Box office sales so far this year are already $1 billion above 2022 sales through the same time frame, according to Sean Robbins, the chief analyst with Box Office Pro, who also said, quote, as we get into July and August, the dog days of summer, the heat can be a determining factor at the box office. I'm John Lawrence reporting. U.S. Department of Defense officials confirmed four U.S. Navy destroyers were dispatched last week off the coast of Alaska. That's after nearly a dozen Chinese and Russian ships were spotted near the Aleutian Islands. 
A Chinese embassy spokesperson says the naval vessels from the two countries were conducting joint maritime patrols in the western and northern Pacific Ocean and said the action was not targeted at a third party. Chinese and Russian vessels came similarly close to Alaska last summer. And more Americans are living alone. Since this data shows nearly 38 million Americans live by themselves. That's a record high. Experts say that number is likely to rise in the coming decades as the baby boom generation ages. And researchers are examining why this is happening. So they're citing several reasons that include so-called gray divorce. It is estimated about one third of all divorces in the country involve people who are 50 and older. Researchers say besides divorce, widowers and people who never got married also explain why more Americans are living living by themselves. A possible cage fight between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg might be streamed on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. That's according to Musk, who posts on social media that he was, quote, lifting weights throughout the day, preparing for the fight, end quote. Musk added that, quote, all proceeds will go to charity for veterans, end quote. The two big tech billionaires seemingly agreed to participate in a fight last June. However, neither Musk nor Zuckerberg has confirmed whether an agreement has been reached on the fight. And if you'll recall, Zuckerberg is now, was it judo, jujitsu? Oh, that's he's, right. He's been yeah. super involved in martial arts now mm. for, I think during, he started during the pandemic. Uh, way back then. Yeah, that, that would be interesting. We'll keep you posted. Mm -hmm could get very interesting. 541, 79 degrees. Up next, the new mayor of Bernie talks about how he is trying to lead his community's rapid growth in a positive direction. Maybe it was judo. I can't remember. Anyway, he's involved. <laughs> martial arts. Yeah, martial arts. <laughs> uh, outside with live cam looking back towards downtown where the uh, KSAT station, one of our towers is twinkling there in uh, your shot. You're watching GMSA. Five, just about 545, Bernie is a city on the rise. The Bernie Kendall County Economic Development Corporation states that the population of Bernie is expected to continue to grow at a rapid rate over the next several years. And Mayor Frank Ritchie joined us this weekend for leading essay to talk about how to grow the city in a good way. Bernie Mayer joined us. We talked about a lot. We talked about the extensive growth that his community has seen. We talked about his first few months in office, him telling us he is not a politician. So what that transition has looked like. And of course, we talked about balancing the growth in Bernie. Here's part of our conversation. Is how do we grow uh, responsibly, right? Um, making sure that we have the proper infrastructure, making sure that our water conservation efforts are, are top notch, uh, making sure that we we build responsible and, and not overbuild. And so um, until we can handle our, our, our infrastructure and get that stuff moving forward, um, you know, we were probably gonna take a pause and slow down for, for a little bit. If, if, if I'm being honest with you, that's, um, that's one of our priorities is, is making sure that we can handle any more growth at this time. You can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. We have leading essay every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So, guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. And time now is 546 and 79 degrees for now. Multiple flashing lights, 410 and Villa Main. We'll talk to Stephen coming up a little later on in the half hour. It's about 10 minutes till 6, and we still have those flashing lights out here at 410 at Villa Main. Let's get a wide look. This is that crash I mentioned a little bit earlier. We know at this point two lanes are still blocked, according to TxDOT, and we still see those flashing lights out there. Our friends at Transguide are trying to do their best to get us a good view of the conditions, but you can't really make out exactly how many vehicles may be involved in this incident. But we do see traffic is still being able to move through that area, but pretty slow, which is good because we do have first responders out there on the scene, and it is hard to make out whether or not we have paramedics medics, but let's hope everyone is doing okay. But it does start to seem like we are looking at a little bit of relief out there if you're heading eastbound near Espada Road. Now remember, those two lanes are still blocked at this time, so if you see those flashing lights, you got to move over or slow down. I uh, want to mention that we also have some road work taking place a little bit later this morning here along State Highway 16, otherwise known as Bandera Road. We have curb and sidewalk construction. Now this actually starts around 9 this morning, but uh, it's going to take us all the way to the end of the work week, so just know what to expect if you have to travel through there. That work does begin again at 9 this morning, should wrap hopefully at 3 this afternoon. During the meantime, we're going to see alternating lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Circle A. Uh, but you can always head over to KSAT.com slash traffic for a full list of all the traffic updates, but doesn't really seem like we have any better updates out here along Loop 410. If you're heading eastbound, you got to watch out for those first responders. It's a blurry shot there, uh, not so great shot, I should say, but let's hope that everyone is doing okay. But traffic seems to be navigating through there 
okay right now, but remember two lanes are still blocked. It'll be easier to see when the sun comes yeah, up too, yeah, right? Yeah, it will, and hopefully it'll be clear by then, but uh, traffic, it's a busy spot. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Yes. And it'll be hotter when the sun comes out, <laughs> like, like, like the picture we're going to see here. I was going to say, can we just kind of put that off for about a week or That'd so? Be nice. right? Because, yeah, once that sun does come up, it heats up very quickly. And here's uh, Look at that. home weather, uh, weather station right. there and uh, the outdoor temperature, at least in this person's backyard, is 109 degrees. And then notice how the humidity gets down to 23 percent. And that's the, the big problem that we're facing, even though that makes it a little bit more comfortable. That allows then temperatures to really heat up. And then we get with that lower humidity that raises the fire danger. And also when the breeze starts to pick up a little bit late in the day. But yeah, it's and that's not going to be changing at all. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Of course, we are in the hottest time of the year, which is now through the 16th of the month as far as the normal high temperature, the average high temperature being 97 degrees. And notice how this is not um, in a, it's the curve there. That bell shape is not symmetrical, so we do drop off quicker than we do heat up. Now that doesn't mean it's going to get down to 90 degrees, but um, at least this is kind of encouraging to look at this graphic. It's going to be staying though well above normal by a good eight close to 10 degrees throughout the uh, foreseeable future, however, which is not good news. All right, here's out the airport. Lots of twinkling lights out there. Lots of clear skies, 80 degrees, 73 Bernie State, 75 Rio Medina. And as far as yesterday, we did get up to 105. That tied the record yesterday. And today we are going to be up there again. Yeah, triple digit temperatures 108 there at Del Rio 107 Eagle Pass and all around the metropolitan area and I don't know why models keep these particular readings at 99s but it's going to be well above 100 all over the area but the heat index well it's going to feel hot and this is just basically because of the temperature and again the toughest part of the day though is right in the early afternoon because we don't get rid of the humidity yet and then we have temperatures that are upper 90s right around low hundreds and finally in the afternoon the humidity does drop down but yeah it's that that early afternoon that's really tough out there and then it's just that blazing sunshine it's so it, i don't mean to say funny but stepping outside it's just i mean literally like a blast furnace out there and we are going to be staying up around 105 all the way through the rest of the week uh, temperatures will be flirting with records each and every day. Low temperatures stay at 78, the normal low being 76 right now. And a subtle little something maybe next week. A subtle little something. something. That, that's all. I mean, <laughs> really, that's the, the best way to put it. Okay. Um, that there's going to be some indications of this thing trying to kind of change ever so slightly. But yeah, nothing major. It's like you're a, a, a waiter at a fancy restaurant describing a future appetizer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. It's very subtle, subtle with yeah. a little hint yeah. of citrus, uh, but it's not on the menu yet. Just a yeah. hint of Madagascar cinnamon. So, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Either way, we look forward to it. Thank you, Mike. 554, 79 degrees. So we are winning a lot of numbers. We have pick three, two, four, five, fireball seven. Dilly 40707, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 2, 8, 17, 23, 29. Lotto, Texas 2, 12, 14, 45, 49, 53. And Powerball, which is again tonight, $145 million. Mega tomorrow night, $1.55 billion. It's almost time for the 2023 KSAP Pigskin Classic. This year will be even bigger than last year because we've added an extra night of football. There will be one game Friday, August 25th, and three games on Saturday the 26th. Tickets are on sale now, and KSAT insiders can be, get the VIP experience with the best seats in the house. You also get to hang out with us, uh, KSAT staff. Just scan the QR code on your screen for more information. Can't wait to see everybody out there. Ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, fentanyl is the number one killer of Americans 18 to 50. Why experts say right now is the best time to have a tough conversation with your own kid or kids. Plus, San Antonio fire investigator believes someone started three fires on the west side this weekend. What people who live there are saying about a possible suspect. And we're still tracking those flashing lights. 410 at Villa, Maine. Stephen Cavazos is on the case. We'll be back.